I have not seen any of these guys. We're literally blind reacting to every single one of these videos. Well, let's see. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the red pill and we're going to be talking about the parallels that I've noticed that they have with feminists. So within this video, I will be focusing a lot more on just pearly things, not because I necessarily think she's like the worst or anything like that. It's just, I've seen so much more of her content, likely because as a Brit, her content interests me more because she's talking to people in London. So yeah, so she will work as my case study within this video. So this video was recorded long before I learned about Just Pearly Things recent um, scandal or recent drama, whatever the hell you wanna call it. So there will be no mentioning of that in this video. If you care about what my thoughts are on that, then let me know in the comments and maybe I'll talk about it. But yeah, so just in case you wonder like, hey, since you spoke about Pearl and race, how come you didn't also talk about that? This ha this video was recorded before that happened, so. So the first thing I wanna discuss between the two is the man versus woman rhetoric. Now, I think it's pretty obvious to many how this applies to feminists. Feminists have very much been going down the whole, the future is female, women can do everything that men can do except they can do it in heels. That kind of rhetoric has been going on within feminism for a very long time and it's always created a very competitive type of atmosphere between men and women. Now, red pillars, as much as they criticize feminists, seem to have a very very similar rhetoric. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with acknowledging the differences between men and women, but I think the way that some red pillars and feminists choose to do it can be negative. For example, here is an article that was written by The Guardian where they were discussing that women are stronger than men. Now, the metric that they used to dis- You, what? When it comes to longevity, surviving illness, and coping with trauma, one gender comes out on top. Angela Saini meets scientists working out why. That's such horseshit. Just saw a video today on, um, I don't even know if you're allowed to put, put it up on YouTube. Combat footage in Ukraine going on right now where guys were dug in trenches fighting for survival. They're being overrun. Yeah. I want to see women try to survive situations like that in extreme duress and stress. Longevity, bro. You don't think that kind of like that. What is defined trauma? I hate these broad terms. Coping with trauma. What does that mean? What kind of trauma? That your soy latte was too hot and it burned your lip? I mean, let's be real here. How do you even measure this in a person? How do you measure the amount of trauma and the seriousness of the trauma a person undergoes throughout their entire life and how that leads them to a, quote, early deaths? Please explain that for me. This can't be like quantified scientifically. Surviving illness. Are we just talking about the recent one that was basically killing? Yeah, the scales were tipped not in men's favor, but weren't they also older? Weren't they already past the 70 something years old? What is that? What do they call that? I forget what the word is. Uh, life expectancy. So most of the people dying were beyond life expectancy already. So, okay. Women live longer, but women don't work as hard. I mean, can you say that in general, women live longer because typically men used to work themselves to death. Men were in the mines being buried alive. Men were inhaling all the soot and all the stuff for working in coal, et cetera. Like, isn't it, doesn't it make sense to you? that men would die faster because of the amount of pressure they put their body under in general article that was written by the guardian where they were discussing that women are stronger than men now the metric that they used to decide this was things like longevity in terms of who lives longer they also looked at immunity and they also looked at trauma women tend to live longer than men women also tend to have better immune systems than men and women also tend to be better at handling trauma than men and so yeah, no shit. You haven't had to deal with coal mines. <laughs> My true thanks. Handle trauma. Sounds like a pro conscription. <laughs> so based on these metrics, they decided that women are stronger. Now you will see the red pillars doing the exact same thing. A 12 year old boy will literally f any of you all up at the table. I promise you. Mm -hmm. Men are physically superior to women. There's a reason why there's an NBA, not a WNBA. There's a reason why high school boys destroy women national team in soccer. There's a reason why Serena Williams lost to a hungover guy ranked 97th in a tennis exhibition match. World champion, best tennis player ever, destroyed by a man that's hungover. You cannot compete with a man. Does it, this is all factual. I'm curious to see where she takes this video because what he said so far is all factual. It's not even close. A teenage boy can absolutely wreck a grown woman. Men are physically superior to women in every which way. Now, what you'll notice is that the metrics that they both decided to use in terms of who is physically superior or who is stronger are very different because they'll both use the metrics which benefit them the most. And they will both use... 
Uh, it's the word salad. We're going to redefine meanings. So when you say who's stronger, we now have to define who stronger is. If I punch you in the face and cave your shit in, and then you punch me in the face and nothing happens, guess who's stronger? That's how that works. If somebody decided to overpower somebody else, the one doing the overpowering is the stronger one. What? This is where we're at today. We're just, now we have to play around with words. Okay. Use that as a justification as to why they think that their sex is the one that's superior. Oh when neither are superior because they are very different and complementary. The Listen, it's fine to say that men and women are different, but it's also true that men are superior physically to women. They're both true. The men versus women rhetoric is something that I've also noticed is often pushed on Just Pearly Things' as podcast, where she will often say things like, men don't need women. Men need women, women need men. It's uh, how human beings are designed. We're designed to complement each other. And I think just... I don't think men need women. You don't think so? Mm -mm. Why not? Because they would survive without us. We wouldn't survive without them. They run the infrastructure of society. They do all the hard jobs. If, they, if, we, were, if we disappeared tomorrow, if, if outside of reproduction, they would keep living. Single men are more likely to commit suicide. Single men are more likely to have mental health problems. Single men are more likely to die with depression. And that's also changing because single men are also more, more likely to live happier, more fulfilled lives. They have deeper friend circles than married men. They earn a little less, but... They live a much better life overall when they were polled. Okay. And that's just, again, we can argue that back and forth too. That was just what that research article said that we read that one time on the channel. We're not saying that all married men or family men are doing bad. If anything, that's like the ultimate thing a man can do is have a family that he's shepherding correctly and taking care of well. That's the ultimate test of a man. Nobody here denies that. But again, there are differences that are biologically based. And yes, it tends to be true that if you made men and women separate, men would be just fine. Women would start running into a whole bunch of issues. Women are far more social. They're far more socially connected. Their friend groups are far stronger than men. That's why you can have a guy that's essentially a hermit. He chills with his dog. He lives a very solitary life. And he would consider himself, quote, happy, but he would say things like, if I had a woman and kids, that might be nice. That'd be, you know, ideal, but I'm happy where I'm at. You rarely ever hear a woman on the other side of the spectrum going, you know, I'm in my 40s and I don't have a man. I don't have kids. And, eh, you know, it would be nice, but I'm happy exactly where I'm at. No, the other side, vast majority of them are crying about men and what men are doing and who men are dating and how they wish this and that. And I know my worth, all this shit. That's the difference. Um, there is biological needs for men and women. They need each other. That's how we're designed. The majority of men haven't reproduced historically. As in, like, haven't had kids? Mm -hmm. What do you mean like by... Like, only 40% only of men have reproduced historically. And they're so the I'm ones saying, that have survived. So, I, I know, I said yeah. outside of reproduction. Yeah. So, so the whole point is the... Inf like, I, I understand that men mm. would prefer to have a partner, but yeah. the whole point is society would keep on going on mm -hmm. if women disappeared tomorrow. It wouldn't be the same for... I, I think man. outside of reproduction, what does a man need a woman for? He doesn't, right? Because outside of reproduction, he doesn't need a woman. Therefore, men don't need women. Now, it doesn't take a whole lot of brain work to dismantle why that argument doesn't make any sense. Here's how nonsensical that argument actually is. Let me give you some more examples. Outside of hydration, human... She needs to listen to some Patrice O'Neill. Like men don't really like hanging out with women as opposed to like like in comparison to hanging out with their guy friends. The vast majority of guys hang out with girls because they're trying to get laid. That's like the brutal truth of it all. Your girl is probably not as funny as the boys. She doesn't like to do the things you do with the boys, like go on hikes, lift weights, MMA, shit like that. You have a woman simply because you're trying to get it in. Oh my God, welcome to being a man. Oh my God. And then you happen to start liking her after you slept with her a bunch of times. Then she becomes, um, what could you say? Bearable? I don't know what other word I could use there. You can finally stand being in her presence. Because most guys are, in the first date especially, this is super true, man. On the first date especially, when you take a woman out, you're rolling your eyes, you're doing the whole fake laugh at her jokes. Tolerate. Exactly. Tolerable. Your woman is tolerable to you. And the more she does the things you like, having sex, the more tolerating you are of her presence. 
That's what it is. Oh my God, I just said something so messed up. That's, what, that's gonna piss a lot of people off, but it's the truth. Most guys, I'm telling you, man, if we're being brutally honest, the women on the other side of the aisle probably have no idea. Most guys are tolerating their significant others. Women think men actually like them. We like what you can give us. <laughs> just, that one's gonna ruffle feathers, but it is what it is. Then we get attached after the fact, after seeing you a bunch of times, after getting to know you, after. That is why when a woman asks like how long they've been in a relationship, and then the man will ask truly how long they've been in a relationship, the man's ask, answer is always shorter. The guy will be like, yeah, we've been dating for six months. Because the first three months, she was just a pump and dump hookup. She was just giving it up. We were having a blast, but I had no intentions for it. And then I kind of, I fell for her. And I was like, yeah, she's actually a pretty cool chick. Women don't work in that fashion. A woman will be like, yeah, the first day we hooked up, we were official. Come on, man. I'm about to make a private community too, just so we can have types of conversations like this, like the real, that real crimson red pill. Because half the shit I tell you on YouTube is just to be safe, obviously, on platforms. But you wanna get really dark red, so that's coming down the pipeline, don't worry. I'll announce it soon. Anywho, continue. Humans don't need water. You can survive without water outside of hydration. Therefore, humans don't need water. Outside of hunger, humans don't need food. Therefore, humans, don't need food. I'm having fun now, let's do one more, one more. Outside of breathing, human beings don't need oxygen. Therefore, humans don't need oxygen. It's very easy. Very interesting, uh, psychologically speaking too, because women seek out strong men to protect and provide for them. So they're already coming from a need based situation as opposed to men that try to amass a harem of women just like he would amass a bunch of arrows, a bunch of stones, a bunch of crops, a bunch. The more he can attain, the better. You, you understand? Been like this since the dawn of time. The richer a man gets, the more women he's going to try to get. This is why you see the most uber successful men in society today typically have a harem of women. Think of your Tates, think of your Dan Bilzerians, think of queen, like kings, I mean, royalty, etc. They always have the one main, right? But then they always have a, a concubines everywhere. It is what it is. Mongolian kings, yeah. Dude, where, how many people, one in how many, trace back the Genghis Khan? What's the numbers, do you guys know? One in some insane number of people can trace their lineage to one man, a conqueror. I don't even remember what it was. One in 200, something like that. One in 300, one in, one in six? No, it's like one to 3%, yeah, yeah. We'll see to use Pearl's strategy to rationalize the most absurd things. We know obviously that human beings need water. We know that human beings need food. We know that human beings need oxygen. But if you use Pearl's strategy, then you can justify why they don't. In the hypothetical world that she's created where men don't need women for reproduction, it makes perfect sense. But if you have to create- That's perfectly put. She's conflating survival of the species with survival of an individual. Yeah, and that's the lens she's viewing the world from. Create a fake reality in- Oh, I had to pause this. Bo, the king of Thailand took 400 of his wives and concubines to the hotel with him during COVID lockdowns. There you go. In order for your argument to make sense, that's usually the first indication that there's a flaw in your argument. Because if it made sense, it should be able to apply in reality. So because we don't live in a world where men don't need women for reproduction, that does mean that there is something that men need women for. If a man wants to have a child, he does need a woman. But if we're gonna take it away from reproduction for a second, and we're gonna go a bit deeper into Pearl's argument here, which is that society would continue to run just fine without women because women don't do infrastructure jobs. The problem with this is that I don't think Pearl is aware of the jobs that women dominate, such as healthcare. Just because women are not doing jobs in infrastructure does not mean that women are not doing vital jobs. I would argue that healthcare is, is pretty important, no? There are plenty of jobs that men do which are vital for society and are definitely needed in order for society. Healthcare, there's a ton of male nurses. There's a ton of men running hospitals. There's a ton of male surgeons. Some the best surgeons in the world are mostly men. What? <laughs> okay. To function. There are also jobs in society that women dominate that are also essential for society to function. When these infrastructure workers have an accident at their job and they need to go and be cared for, who's going to be doing that then? In order for these men to go out and work and do what they... The difference is anybody can be 
a nurse, man or woman. But not every woman can lay bricks. Not every woman can go up on a power line that's like hundreds of feet in the air with heavy ass tool belt equipment, all that shit and do a underwater welding. Do you know how many women do underwater welding? The number's probably f zero. I've never heard of a woman that welds underwater rigs in my life. That's the point. Sap, thanks brother. Uh, I work in nursing and I would say at least 20% of nurses are men. There you go. They have to do, who's going to be looking after their children in daycare? When these men become very, very old and are no longer able to take care of themselves and have to be put in a home, who's going to be looking after them in said home? So here again, we find another parallel between fem- Again, we survived as a species without old folks' homes for the longest time possible. What are you talking about? Old folks' homes are a new invention. It's irrelevant. I mean, someone said AI. Yeah, man will just invent some robots <laughs> and some AI. He's good to go. Just put one of these watches on your wrist, track all your goddamn biometrics and you're good to go if something comes uh, like something uh, is read wrong there's an error somewhere your heart's beating too fast too slow whatever boom send send a call out to somebody to come check on your ass there you go they all think she's talking about women doing uh back office work in health bless her heart yeah feminist and red pill we need somebody to do all the billing guys who's gonna charge everybody up the ass who's gonna punch all the paperwork and fax all the papers and make the calls. In the same way that feminists so. completely ignore the importance that men have in society and the important roles that men fulfill within society that help society to keep running and functioning, red pillars also do the same, but in reverse. They completely ignore the work that women do in society and the roles that women play in keeping society functioning. Men and women have very different interests and this is what makes us very complementary. Our differences in interests are actually very, very beneficial to keeping society balanced because it wouldn't be good if everybody wanted to do infrastructure because then all the care-based services would have no one doing them. And it also wouldn't be good if everyone was interested in the care-based services because then no one would be doing the infrastructure work. Now, one of the things that Pearl regularly argues on her channel is that women don't want to do hard jobs or that women don't want to do messy jobs. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I'll be honest, there was a time when I used to agree with this statement until I thought about it a a little bit harder both men and women do very physically challenging you need to think some more sister manny thanks uh women need to watch why the last man show a uh, brief reality of how society goes to poo real quick challenging jobs and both men and women do very messy jobs they just do different types the amount of women who have damaged their backs from years of working in care because of the are we really the amount of women oh god here we go <sighs> the amount of women who've Hurt their backs, pick, picking up shit from old people. Those adult diapers can get heavy. Says someone that's literally never experienced working in sewage, working on power lines, working on roofs, working on building skyscrapers, welding wherever, underwater, skyscrapers, everywhere in between. Landscaping. Forget the building. How about just getting the land prepped for a foundation to be put down? Laying the foundation, hanging by thousands of feet, cables, wires all around you, just to create something called a building. And all the other shit, firefighting. I don't know. We push women into firefighting, but they do a poor job at it. They fail all the technical requirements, the performance metrics, but we have to, you know, push them in there for a, a quality sake. And before that, all men. And how many men died fighting fires? All this other shit that men do just to keep so a society going. Come on, man. Are you kidding me? Backbreaking work and men go hand in hand. Men have been doing backbreaking work predominantly. This is how society has sprung up to what it is today because men are doing back-breaking work. So back-breaking that we invented tools to help us not break our backs just a little less than yesterday. Jesus. We really got care homes here. What a reach. Are we pandering? Does she have like a certain uh, following that she's pandering to? Dale, how many women died in war? Yeah. And I always love the war argument too, because you know what their clap back to that is? Well, who started the war? <laughs> okay. Some of them were started over a woman. 
Mm, couldn't keep her legs closed. Went and slept with the other guy. So now innocent men had to die. Shit happens. Read about those stories. The amount of times they had to lift people who were significantly heavier than them. That is a regular occurrence for a lot of care workers to end up having damage to their backs because of the amount of heavy lifting they have to do within the profession. Where a man is more likely to go and clean the sewers or he's more likely to be collecting waste, women are more likely to go into jobs that require them to handle poop, pee, vomit, blood. Does she even know about sewage work? Maintaining the sewage system? What do you think? Tr what do you think's in trash, lady? Have you ever been? Have you took a manhole cover off and just go down there and see what the hell is going on? And we're not going to mention mines, coal mines, and all this other crazy shit. Digging to the bottom of the earth. G so deep the temperature changes. Imagine going into a mine where it's freezing f***ing cold because you're so many feet down under. Or the opposite. It gets so goddamn hot depending on where you're at yeah dude it's wild seeing those guys go into these deep ass mines and it's like 130 degrees down there just hot as shit breaking their back <laughs> i'm sure that guy would rather pick up old people and all types of other bodily fluids i'm sure we don't even know exist the amount of disgusting things that my friends have seen from working in healthcare is definitely not for those with a weak stomach so yes men do physically challenging jobs and they also do messy jobs but women also do physically challenging jobs and messy jobs the difference men can do all the physically challenging messy jobs women do but women cannot do all the physically challenging messy jobs men do bean cheeks thanks cleaning adult diapers clearly doesn't compare to sewage work keep this up tribe man love your content <laughs> appreciate you man they just do different types now let's get into the parallels between the red pill what and the feminists when it comes to how they talk about marriage. Red pillars talk so negatively about marriage and discourage men from getting married because they feel as though men are going to be taken advantage of, men are going- Because the laws aren't in our favor and we only talk about marriage in a negative light in the West because it's so easy. The government hands you a freebie to just leave men behind without any repercussions to you. Apart from your children now being raised in a single mother household, you get benefits for leaving your man. What a stupid ass system is that? Especially, especially you have a job and you probably out earn your husband. And yet you still want to get some of his money, some of his assets and take away his kids. Great. Such an even system. And to be used and abused by the courts and the divorce yes. laws and the family yeah. court system. And so like the courts favor women in general. Yeah, and so like I, from a girl's point of view, I want to get married. Of course I want to get married. But like if I was a guy, I would have a really hard time with it. And you could say it's the type of woman, but 50% of marriages end in divorce. Women leave the majority of the time. I don't think it's the type of woman. I think it's that they're paying women to leave. And I need to I mean, 50% succeed as well. When you have a contract that someone's paid to leave like more people are going to do it and you could argue that it's the quality of the woman but if it's a 50 percent chance she can take your kids and take half like if i was a guy i would have a hard time I mean, with it so i'm curious what makes you guys want to go through with that so let's get into divorce stats now i won't dive too deeply into this because i do actually want to do a deep dive on marriage and divorce because i Let's see your deep dive. Freelancer, thanks, brother. I weld for a living doing a little under 10 years and um, had to preheat metal plates to 250 degrees and weld 10 to 15 passes and it got 700 degrees. Yeah, I'm sure there's women welders, but some of the more extreme welding jobs, you're not finding any woman. Underwater rigging, I've never seen one underwater weld in my life. Never even heard of it. I do think there are quite a lot of misconceptions on social media. Whether people decide to get married or not, that's absolutely fine. But I think decisions should be based on facts, not misconceptions. Most of my audience are British and American, so let's look at those locations. So according to Harbour Family Law UK, divorce rates are currently at 42%. I got slightly varying results for the US, but they're estimated to be around 40 to 50%. Many people think that divorce rates are currently at an all-time high and increasing, but this is actually false as divorce Divorce rates are currently decreasing in both the UK and the US. The UK and the US had a slight increase in divorce in 2021, but it wasn't necessarily because there were more marriage breakdowns in 2021. Hold on. By the numbers, over the last 50 years, the marriage rate in the US has dropped by nearly 60%. There you go. Over a long enough time span, not year by year, you can see that divorce, uh, what is it, marriage rates continuously keep dropping and it won't stop. 
this number will keep increasing. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. Divorce rates in the United States have been steadily declining. Yeah, that makes sense too, because it dropped by 60%. Oh my God. According to the American Psychological, 40 to 50% of first marriages end in divorce. So it's dropped to half. By the way, the overall marriage rate has dropped by 60 and continues to drop. And of the ones that are barely, barely getting married, still half. Wow, the odds are horrendous. Okay. It was more so they were playing catch up and filing for divorces that they weren't able. Oh, I got a super chat here. Jarrett, uh, had a woman tell me guys still make more money than women, but I didn't have the heart to tell her not true. You're just kind of ugly. <laughs> Eesh. Able to file for in 2019 and 2020 due to the fact that courts and other services were closed because of lockdown. Now, there are multiple contributing factors for why divorce rates are declining. And although divorce rates are declining, this isn't necessarily completely a good thing. It's complicated. I'll explain in more detail when I do my deep dive on marriage. These concerns and these issues are not ungrounded. There's a lot of legitimate reasons as to why men feel this way. And I do think that we should address them. I don't think that the answer is to just completely turn away from marriage altogether. Marriage the laws. works perfectly fine in other parts of the world. The Talk about the laws. Looney boy thinks leading cause of divorce is marriage. If everyone stopped getting married, there would be no more divorce. Makes sense. They are correlated. The places where it fails the most is in the West. And the answer to that is because it's not because marriage is the problem. It's because the culture and our laws are the problem. Finally, here we go. There's nothing but street walkers getting created left and right. Hardly any conservative women left. And the laws are horrible. Let's talk about it. And so it. if we can fix those two issues, then we can encourage couples to stay together for longer, which will ultimately be better for society because it's better for children. But the negative rhetoric that a lot of red pillars have about marriage is very, very similar to the negative rhetoric that feminists have about marriage. In the same way that some red pillars talk very negatively about marriage and encourage men not to get married because they're going to be taken advantage of and they're going to be abused and used by the system, feminists also argue similar kind of rhetoric, but in regards to women. I want to talk to you today about how women suffer under the current system. The thing that strikes me about marriage is that it doesn't do what it says on the tin. Everybody who has been talking tonight has been talking about love and fidelity and support and how everybody's got the right feelings and blah, blah, blah. 42% of our marriages will end in divorce. Is there more happiness at the marriage end before there is misery and hardship at the divorce end? I don't know, but it seems to me that a system that can be relied upon to fail nearly half of the time is a pretty rotten system. And the curious thing is, of course, that in the marriage ceremony, we make vows till death do us part that we don't mean. The vows are bull. I mean, half of those marriages almost will end in divorce, and some very quickly. We've talked about marriage as a way of supporting children. Are we joking? Yeah, and there's a quote, Sophocles, I inscribe on water the vows of women. <laughs> Who gave up on the vows? Who treats them like they're meaningless, just words? Come on, man. 80% of divorces are initiated by women, no? I'm just saying. I'm just repeating statistics here. No one believes in vows anymore because they're just words. It's theater. Nobody's religious anymore. Nobody is God-fearing. Nobody thinks about consequences of going back on your word. Hardly any people today have any real character. That's the problem. Are we joking? We absolutely cannot get child support. We can chase people for everything else. They can chase you for a parking fine. They can chase you for unpaid council tax, but they can't get the non-resident parent who is nearly always male. Isn't it curious? There is such a heterosexual cast to the whole ceremony. We might say the family is no longer patriarchal, please. Of course it is. Of course, we understand we have two women a week killed by their partner. Were they married or unmarried? Who cares? Basically, the system is the same. The system is a hammer and anvil system. 
And women are caught up in what that the system. Hell? There are many feminists who view marriage as basically being an enslavement contract. They view marriage as a way for men to control and abuse women. So ultimately, both sides have very negative views about marriage and they kind of have the same kind of reasons as to why they dislike marriage. Both sides dislike marriage because they think that the other side is going to use it as a tool of oppression. So red pillars believe that men will be oppressed by marriage and feminists believe that women will be oppressed by marriage. So both sides are encouraging both sexes to just completely avoid marriage. So some have compared just pearly things to the late Kevin Samuels. Now I personally think that that is a mistake. Now there might be a few similarities. For example, it seems as though Pearl has stolen Kevin Samuels' grammatically incorrect phrase don't over talk me. See, see. But I'm not going for somebody who's so much. No, okay, like I don't going. over talk me. Rather than saying don't talk over me, she says don't over talk me, which was something that Kevin Samuels used to say a lot. And I can only assume she got it from Kevin Samuels because no one else says don't over talk me. Everyone says don't talk over me. But aside from that, I don't get the same energy from Jess Pearly things that I got from Kevin Samuels. When it comes to Kevin Samuels, I know a lot of people disliked Kevin Samuels and it's and there are some things about him that you can criticize and that's absolutely fine. When you watch his content in full, not just the clips that go viral online, you do get a very strong sense that Kevin overall wanted to try and bridge the gap between black American men and black American women. Look. I need to really say this. I take no particular pride or pleasure in doing shows like this because I know it triggers certain certain black women. I know they do. I know some of them get pissed. I've heard women are on YouTube saying things that they don't watch the show end to end. And I'm not going to, and, and that's not going to change anything because there are far more women and far women who are listening. And who are the who are the recipients? The women who listen end to end and are saying, "Well, you've changed my life. You've helped me look at this way or that way." Those women are benefiting, and guarantee when those those women come into contact with men doing something, they all benefit. We're better off working with each other, trying to understand one another. You know, none of us are perfect. Certainly not me. I ain't. I got a lot of problems. It's like anybody else. We all got issues. But just like Ice Cube, when the brother is trying to do, when the brother steps up to do something, support, find ways to support. Can you interact with them just in a peaceful, civil way? If you never get married and never have kids, can you have a higher quality of life? Can you just be happy? Can you stop walking through life with your hands up, ready to fight the reflection Thanks of you, the, five, Boomer. the opposite sex reflection of you? I don't walk through life looking at black women as though they're my enemy. And I would hope that for the black women who this applies, you stop walking through life assuming that black men are, are, are somebody to challenge, somebody to overcome, to struggle against. Rip KS, Ryan. He was the dad I never had. If I didn't speak to him, my life would be very different. We don't need that. I know that a lot of the popular rhetoric about Kevin Samuels was that he was just always trying to crap on black women and that he was always trying to put them down. And the reason why this has happened is because he spoke about a lot of the issues that were very specific to black women. For example, the fact that a lot of black women tend to be overweight, which is not an opinion. That is a statistical fact that black women in countries like the US and the UK are the most overweight demographic. He also used to touch on the the fact that a lot of black women are having children out of wedlock. Again, this is a fact. In the US, something like 70% of black women have children outside of marriage. And so one of the things that Kevin often pushed on his channel was the promotion of marriage because he believed that more people should be getting married. And he also tried to encourage families to stay together. So would you rather have had no would you rather have had no siblings? Me? Mm-hmm. No, I love my I love my. Then thank you. Then 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 let's cut to the cut cut the crap. Life is about people and family. Life is about family. When you are when something happens in your life, mm -hmm. you want family. You want people who share your bloodline, your family culture. You want when you're old and no longer to be a little cute girl doing her hair like this. You want somebody to say mama, nanny, something, and so forth. Life is about family. And one of the worst things that's happened to so many black women is you guys are just not making families, cut off from the very essence of being a woman, which is to nurture and move the culture forward. 
for whatever reason, good, bad, or indifferent, but trying to get our women to become what every other group has, women who want to be mothers and pass things forward. I'm not trying to say what happened. I'm saying life happens to us all. Right. But the point of having all this stuff or doing all these things is family, people. And for these reasons, I don't really think there's a lot of similarity between Pearl and Kevin Samuels, because based on the stuff that I've heard Pearl say, it sounds as though she very much discourages her audience from getting married. Now, this for me personally is one of my biggest issues with Pearl's content, is the way she talks about marriage. The reason why I have an issue with it is because I think it's quite evident to many people that most of Pearl's audience is black, black people in the US, black people in the UK. Now, these are demographics that already have problems with broken home. This is one of the contributing factors to a lot of our other issues that we have. And so whether or not Pearl realizes it or not, I don't think she's doing it intentionally. I don't think she would do something like this intentionally. But the rhetoric that she pushes about marriage is in my opinion, a big problem. We know that statistically, children who come from single parent homes have much worse outcomes than kids. Pause, single mother homes. Kids who come from single father homes statistically are in line with a two-parent household, okay? A single mother home is way worse. It's all in the stats. There's something else too. Oh, even if you have money. So if you're a wealthy single mother, even your money won't help your child. Accounting for income, a single mother household is worse for the outcome of a child's life. That's wild because we usually associate single motherhood with low income or low earning households. Kids who come from two parent homes. According to the Marriage Foundation, cohabiting parents are four times more likely to split up than married couples. And research has found that one fifth of couples who cohabit account for one half of all family breakdowns. Couples are four times more likely to split up and cause a family breakdown if they're not married. Then that would imply that marriage does actually play a role in keeping families together. So when you have an audience of predominantly black viewers who already have high numbers of broken homes, because in our UK Commission's race report, it revealed that 63% of Caribbean descent households are fatherless and 43% of African descent households are fatherless. And when your audience is predominantly black, a demographic with the highest rate of broken homes, and you speak negatively about the very thing that would help them to prevent broken homes, I do take issue with that. Very much so, because we know the effects that broken home. Right, but let's talk about the culture, problems in that aspect. Let's talk about why it's so broken. Let's talk about society as a whole. Don't just put this shit on men or just say that men need to stay in marriages or men need to do this. Let's talk about society at large, culture, the laws on the books, and the way the government is treating certain communities and certain areas, all of this shit matters. Yeah, no father, no order. Soul eater, uh, off topic question, a girl unsure of being, a girl unsure of being in a relationship wants to take a month break to reset her thoughts before our next date. Should I show up to the next scheduled date or call it off? She's about to hop on somebody else's dick. What are you talking about, bro? Break means hot dogs in her mouth all day, every day. Demote her to the fun thing, the catch and release. Um, no date, tell her to come straight over, watch a movie, pipe it up, and send her ass on, a, on her way to the streets where she belongs. She could have her break there by the dumpsters. Homes have on children, and we know the negative effects they have on their outcomes. The frustrating thing about this is that Pearl herself knows that. Pearl herself has spoken many times about the negative effects of single parent households. She knows that it puts children at a statistical disadvantage in so many different ways but yet she talks negatively about the very thing that is more likely to keep families together. It's even more frustrating because Pearl is someone who has been quite fortunate in that she comes from a more affluent background. Her parents worked very, very hard. Yeah, and that's the neg negative side of Pearl stuff is she comes from a wealthy family. So she has a very uh, silver spoon look on life and how things are when she tries to talk about relationships that I know I've been preached ripped her apart for. Dale, thanks, brother. So why are, uh, so why get pregnant outside of wedlock? Zero problems, exactly. 
yeah. to earn their success. And as their child, she got to benefit from that. She got to experience the benefit of having two parents in the home. She talks a lot about the traditions that she was able to have. She talks a lot about the, the way her family structure had a very positive impact on her. So she knows the benefits of being a child of a married couple whilst talks negatively about marriage to other people. And this is why I think comparing Pearl to Kevin Samuels is a big mistake because Kevin Samuels was encouraging black women to stop having children out of wedlock. Kevin Samuels was encouraging people to get married. And Kevin Samuels was encouraging women to get back with their baby fathers if it was possible because he understood the importance of keeping the home and keeping families together. Another notable difference between Kevin and Pearl is that from what I've seen of Pearl, she seems to be only interested in holding women accountable. I've yet to ask actually see her hold men accountable for anything whereas at least with kevin although most of the videos that went viral were of him being critical towards women there is also evidence that he had the exact same energy for men because there are also videos of him doing the exact same thing to men but of course those videos didn't go as viral so many people don't even know about them are you living an interesting life i mean you're 34 working in the warehouse what are you doing that's interesting i mean i like to work out okay I mean, I like to so I like to go out, you know, places and visit places and stuff. Okay, you know, I don't. You doing this interesting? See, I didn't have I didn't have none of that when I was a kid, man. My, the, I didn't go to my uh, proms and nothing like that. And what? And at, and at 34 years old, that's your responsibility to address. It's nobody's mm -hmm. concern but your own. No one cares what you did not have. That's your problem. That's it. I didn't have a father. That's my problem. Everybody got something. How tall are you? I'm only five five. Just turned what kind of shape are you in. Um, I, I'm overweight. I'm working on Everybody it. Right now. Okay, okay. You got two struggles already. You can't be short and fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two strikes. You got to pick a struggle. How much? Uh, about how much do you make a year? Um, forty thousand. And how old are you? Well, almost forty. So you're underemployed too. Why would the female <laughs> of the species want to take your genes and put them into the next uh, generation? Correct. Short. I mean, you're fat, underemployed, and and unambitious. Should should males like that in the in the animal world be able to mate? No. <laughs> The defeated no. <laughs> He's short, fat, and broke. <laughs> Diabetes. Uh, he said no. Emotion. At 38 years old, is this what you thought you'd be in life? No. What are you doing with that? Um, working out. No, you ain't working out too fat. That's true. See, this is why I, I had these conversations Bruh. because a lot of this stuff gets <laughs> lost in the sauce when women start talking about m women and these red pills and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. This ain't got nothing to do with women. <laughs> he really said work it out. It's like, nah, you're fat. That's true. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, See, at five foot five, at five, five you should be, you should be in shape for you. Yo, you have zero confidence um, and you're a quitter. Um, you're underperforming and you lack ambition. You need to go and roll in martial arts or boxing somewhere and let somebody knock the shit out of you. Because you don't know who you are. <laughs> Okay, so the final chapter, I know this video has been long, bear with me. Um, so criticizing women is something that happens quite a lot on the red pill. And don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong with criticizing women. And I would say that some of the criticisms that the red pill make about women are very valid criticisms. While I think it's fine, to criticize some of the things that women do. I've done it myself. There's a way in which you can do it so that women can be responsive to it. What is the point of offering criticisms about women if you're not doing it in the way that women will actually listen to? Because again, this is another parallel that the red pill has. They won't. Simple example. And I know that's not the best quality of women, but hubris here, come on. Fresh and Fit is a perfect example of having a panel of women come on Myron literally telling him red pill truths and it going completely over their heads and it will not stick whatsoever, period. They don't care to hear it. They tune out in their brain and they're off in la la land where they think about the next sugar daddy they're supposed to meet for like a thousand dollars. That's it. That's the problem. Women in accountability don't mix. 
something she should know because it's what Kevin Samuels used to say. Women or accountability is kryptonite to women. Why didn't she put that clip in there? Because it completely destroys her next point. Has with feminists because feminists do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. Feminists demonize men and say that masculinity is toxic. They push the narrative that men are dangerous and that men are predators and that men are very dangerous people to be around. We have women who are petrified of men because of all of this rhetoric. Women are so scared of being victimized by men because of all of this rhetoric. Now, the way that feminists... Okay, first of all, first of all, feminists are the ones that are pushing that, yeah, that rhetoric in society today. It's social media. It's the culture war, the message that's being propagated to everybody that says men are predators, women should be afraid. Just like you can see it in politics today, they tell you to hate Team Red because Y. They tell you to hate Team Red because X. And that you're supposed to live in this constant state of fear so that they can control your stupid ass because you're constantly scared and you'll give away all your rights and freedoms in order to feel comfort and security. Yeah, oh my God, welcome to the game. So yes, women are taught to be so afraid of men because you can mooch off of them. You can get, you can extract maximum value out of a scared person. Talk about men. Did it make men want to listen to them? No, it made them quite resentful, to be honest, because many of them are thinking, why are women painting us all like this and making generalizations about us when I have never done anything horrible or terrible to a woman before? This is the kind of rhetoric that some feminists have created. They've created a very anti-man rhetoric. And red pillars are doing a very similar thing, but in the opposite direction. Because if you look at the comment sections of many of these red pill podcasts, they are filled with disgruntled, angry men. Men who have so much negativity to say about women. Oh my God. Are we basing this on commenters anonym anonymously posting the worst stuff under videos? I mean, have you been under pro femme videos and what they say about men have you seen what they are saying about jordan peterson when he was crying or i should just even say shedding a few tears for the state of manhood and masculinity and how women were ripping him. can we go talk about when kevin samuels passed away because since he's in this video what women were doing and saying how happy they were that he passed away celebrating this man's death pathetic Men who are just sick and tired of women, men who want nothing to do with women, they don't want to date, they don't want to get married, they don't want to have families. You've got situations- No, they don't wanna have families here. They don't wanna get married here. They don't want Western women here. They wanna go somewhere else where women are more feminine. Men have been telling women what we want. We want a woman that's submissive. We want a woman that's feminine. She's beaming with positive energy, beautiful smile, can cook, keeps the house clean, wants kids, wants to look after them, wants to support me to build a family together. Men have been saying this. It goes in one ear, comes out the other. Women don't listen. They don't give a shit. They hear boss babe, independent strong queen this and that, you could have everything, you don't need to settle for nothing, you're the table, you're worth everything, he should be offering all this, and you don't need to give up one single thing. That's the bullshit rhetoric that's in the modern dating pool today. This is what the culture is pushing. So men are checking out. Why do you think Passport Bros is even a thing, even becoming a part of the conversation? I guarantee you, that today, there's probably a ton of men, ton of men that are, are secretly making plans to leave the West. They are paving their own way out of this lunacy. I'm telling you, man, give it 20 years, 30 years for it to show statistically. This is like a lagging indicator. Give it 20, 30 years to start being statistically significant. And once all the papers start realizing like, oh crap, quite a few men are starting to leave. Quite a sizable population. It's actually having an impact on the economy and the amount of mate availability and whatever else they want to, let's say, Ryan. Struggle streamers were dragging that for months. Struggle streamers to make a few dollars. People doing Zoom call parties for KS's death. Black community is done. By the way, Ryan is the guy that we did the video on, um, what was that? His situation at work, guys. If you haven't seen it, it was crazy. He got falsely accused barely made it out struggle snuggle struggle streamers which is like the mag tau or whatever it's called men go in their own way which is basically a subgroup within the manosphere where men have just decided they want nothing to do with women altogether so you've got the feminists who have made women want nothing to do with men and then you've got the manosphere that have made men want to have nothing to do with women it's all looking <laughs> great isn't it <laughs> this is fine 
I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Another similarity that the red pillars have to feminists is their insistence on blaming everything on the opposite sex. Some feminists will argue that men are responsible for everything that's bad in society, and some red pillars will argue that women are responsible for every bad thing that happens. That is true. There are some cringy ass red pill channels here. I won't mention them. I've mentioned them before, but all they do is blame women, women, women. I told you the real red pill is far deeper than that. Um, women are just being hypnotized and manipulated by powers to be the ca capitalist class that wants to make every single penny off their back. So they've spun up tales about being a strong, independent boss babe is actually your ticket to freedom and happiness when it isn't when having a family. When people have families and children derive the deepest form of pleasure from. But instead, we're tricking a whole half of the population to think working and paying most of your shit to the IRS and slaving away for another man to get rich because it's probably likely a man owns the company you work for and a bunch of rich people that you'll never get to see. So you're breaking your back to make them money. Great, man. What a fulfilling life. You're going to be on your deathbed hearing meows and you're considered a winner. Neil, if you look at the comment section of this video, her followers think she successfully proved our peers are toxic with her disjointed arguments. I have absolutely no doubt that that's the case. Zach, when men start leaving, they'll make it harder to leave. They'll jack up passport prices or charge an exit tax. Yeah. Um, by the way, if you try to leave America, I believe if you try to rescind your citizenship in America, they increase it to $3,000 now. You have to pay money to rescind your citizenship. Isn't that something? Jug had a great broadcast, tribal man as usual. Uh, love and respect from the UK. And then uh, we got uh, Ryan again, David's bridal. All right, I've read about that. Declared bankruptcy, laying off thousands of workers. They see a decline in the upcoming generation mindset to marriage going forward. Yeah, David's bridal knows. They're on a clock. I already told you guys, I think marriage is headed to be this boutique chic thing, in essence, that only the wealthy do. Only the wealthy can do. I think... The amount of damage psychologically, emotionally, that a average person is going to undergo into adulthood um, just with the cultural rot we have today will make them unviable for marriage. I think most people below whatever you want to call it, the owner class, capitalist class, the top percenters, upper class, whatever name you want to give it, marriage is going to be reduced down to something only rich people do. I'm telling you. Watch, man. Happens in society. Now, I have so much more that I want to say. However, I think this video has been going on for too long. So maybe in the future, I'll make a video discussing the positives and the negatives of the manuscript, in my opinion. So in conclusion, when it comes to the red pill and feminism, we don't need to hear the conclusion. We're done. Someone said, do you think fresh and fit leans towards women are the problem or it's just appearance because of how they operate their show? No, I mean, they blame women for their own accountability issues. They speak in generalities. I don't think it, he's saying it's women's fault. I'm sure Myron's smart enough to know that. Uh, the rabbit hole's way deeper than just women. And um, the way they operate their show is entertainment based. So they have to bring in a ton of bozos. It's probably a mix of everything. You have to bring in women that are so wildly disconnected from reality that they make good entertainment. That's really what it is. And then you crush them in the debate because obviously they're morons. And then you get a, f a few viral clips and you're good to go. Got paid, baby, later. And then kick them out. But I think I've seen uh, Myron shit on men too. Anybody with half a brain will know that. You need to be holding both sides accountable. Both at a personal level, what are you doing as a man and a woman? At the general sense, what are men and women doing in society at large? And then talk about the culture, the overarching culture for humans and the way governments are running said societies. And that's really how you want to encapsulate the red pill. But if you're if you're like a little spurg and all you do is blame women, like it's women's, huh? I can't wait until she hits the wall. And you derive pleasure from some like minuscule shit like that, then yeah, you're in the anger phase and you you're way away from seeing the light yet. You're you're being strung along and manipulated too because there are red pill channels today that make content that caters to you to stay bitter and angry and hating women. And you're probably consuming that shit. And that's the truth. Okay, Rocco, uh, Bo, what's your opinion on the soccer player who had all his assets under his mom and now he gets 50% of his wife's assets? Boss moves, I don't know. I think every man should have blind trusts, should have corporations set up, that own the trust and nothing should really be in your name. You need to protect yourself. Um, I don't know all the regulations and rules from any of the countries you guys are from. 
right? Or I should say from all of them. Speak to a lawyer and an accountant. They can save your life and they can get all your businesses set up and everything you need. If you earn even a little bit of money, right, above the average, then you need to start shielding your assets. That was Patient Zena. I, know, I remember her before. We covered some of her videos before. Don't even remember what we said. Good recommendation. That was cringe. 